entering into the uh, the main salon, if you were to break this up into four zones, you would really have kind of a, a work countertop area here by the breaking breaker panel. You have your freezer and refrigeration. You have your galley area. Uh, then you would head over to your nav desk and or work desk area. And then the final of the four zones would be the entire dining space here. Um, and we will go over each one individually. We've been on, you know, the, the big three uh, manufacturers. We've been on some of the, the performance catamarans. Um, you, you look at the space and volume that you get on this Leopard 45. This uh, salon, just like it's, this salon actually measures out at 12 feet by 16 feet. This is a huge salon. Um, and you know, when you talk about uh, what, what do you look for in a, in a catamaran, we wanted a catamaran that sails well, that has some performance qualities to it, but is still comfortable. We are not looking for a rocket ship and, and there are absolutely gorgeous and beautiful performance catamarans. The challenge that you run into that when you, the more you step up into speed, the less you dial down um, comfort. And it's not that it's, they're not beautiful inside, it's just simply you cannot have a Ferrari on the water with you know all this massive amount of space and volume. So for us to have comfort levels that we wanted while we still have the ability to have some uh, speed and performance was really important to us. So the Leopard 45 really kind of fell into that perfect space for us. It's Andy, Andy. Oh. Hello, you're supposed to tell me you're ready to go. Sleeping at work? Hold on, let me freshen up. <laughs> All right, so still in the, in the uh, salon, this is obviously the dining space. Um, so quickly on the materials, um, the cushions here, uh, there are, at least at, again, at the time that we ordered the boat, maybe these have changed, but there were uh, four options for the materials. There are two faux leather and two suede. We have children, so, for those of you with kids, you know why we took the, uh, the full of, uh, leather. We wanted it to be similar to what was on the outside, so we didn't have a definitive hard break in color. Uh, maybe this gets in, a little into interior design, but um, we, were, we made the conscious decision for the exterior cushions to have somewhat of a flow with, with this artesian full leather. This is another um, option. Obviously, it's a table. However, um, if you don't select this, this magic uh, table that, that morphs into a variety of things, you would have, similar to the table out in the uh, aft cockpit, a stationary, solid, non-moving table. Um, the reason that we opted for this, let me just show you. This uh, is a great card table. Um, it also morphs, so we'll do this. I'll show you how these leaves come out. So now you have the dining table. I will show you in a minute. This actually compresses down and has a cushion that fills in and converts this. Yes, converts this into the absolute biggest bed on the boat. This, I think it would be a king size bed. It's, it's huge. Um, but it's nice that you can convert these things. It, it, you can turn this around and then uh, it's relatively simple. There's a little latch here. You pull the latch. So if you wanted to do card games or you want to turn it into more of a cocktail table, you could pick your selection of height. So if you wanted it down at this height, um, you could turn this table into uh, many, many different things. Uh, we'll show you the bed option next because I'm going to convert this so you can see how, see what it looks like as a bed. this on one of the, the exterior videos so you can see the black mesh this is still uh, it's the um, the mesh screens that are on the outside this helps diffuse the Sun so it keeps the interior salon here or in, in on the inside of the boat uh, cooler so that we said that on the previous video that that was an option now there's an, one of the other options that we um, selected are these interior blinds I'm gonna pull this one down here so they have multiple handles I'll just pull it down from the middle section here but so these things really keep not only the, uh, the, the boat cool on the inside, but it does give you privacy. 
you know, the, the black screens that you see on the outside, during the day, the windows are tinted pretty dark, and then you have that mesh screen, which uh, gives you privacy, keeps the cabin cool, uh, or the salon cool during the day. But at night, if you wanted privacy or you're worried about privacy, and the interior salon lights are on, these windows are completely see-through. These are not something you could pick up off the shelf at Home Depot or Lowe's. Uh, they're very specific to this boat. Um, so again, it's you'll see that it's for every every single window. Now, if Maki pans around over here, you could also see, just for comparison, we lifted the exterior shades here. So the black screens on the outside now are up. So you can see how massive the salon windows are. Tons and tons of viewing and light that comes in uh, and so this is what these windows look like, obviously, without any of the interior or exterior shades on or screening on. See how much privacy. While we're talking about windows, let me just point out the absolutely enormous skylight that's above us here. I don't know how long this is. Eight feet long, not 10 feet long. Uh, huge skylight. Now we do use this daily. Uh, during the day, it is usually closed because it does get hot with the sun coming in. This is, just think of, uh, you know, if you're in your SUV or in your car, how often you have the, uh, the shade cover on because of the, the sun. So this does come from the factory with the shade, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, after the sun has passed, uh, or especially at night and on anchorages, we always have this open because you can see the stars. It's just, it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna mention one thing. This is not about an option, but it's just a, something that we really like that Leopard um, incorporates into their boats. Um, obviously you have the switches for inside and outside lights. We have a different switch also for the forward cockpit. These are all LED uh, lights that draw next to nothing. Matter of fact, a lot of the lights are on right now and we're only drawing one amp. Um, and that's, to be honest, that's not even just the lights because that is showing uh, what power we're using from all the refrigerators on board too. So we have two refrigerators and two freezers on board that are on all the time. So there's only one amp of draw, which is nothing. Um, but the one thing I will say that is very cool, and this is um, all throughout the boat in um, all the, the cabins as well as here at the salon for the aft cockpit and forward cockpit, is that these, um, these are all dimmers. Here, let me show I don't know if you'll see it during the day, but I'll dim this down so you can see the rope lights are dimming mm -hmm. down to nothing. Press it again, and then you come back up. Really cool, and that's that's the same for the spots too. These spotlights will cycle down, and they'll dim, and then and we could probably show this better uh, at night. But another zone, or actually probably the final zone that we're going to touch base on uh, in the salon, is what's con uh, called uh, traditionally the nav station. Um, we actually don't have it outfitted as a nav station and you can, I believe you can still opt to have things. Uh, so if you wanted a duplicate MFD, um, some of the electronics that you have at the helm, you could have down here. The reason we did not do that was because with today's modern technologies, um, we can have our iPads, even our cell phones, but mainly the iPads that are mainly a portable MFD. We can link it directly to the one Bluetooth right to the main MFD at the helm and you could actually run it from here. Um, we have the handheld remote control for the autopilot. So we didn't feel, at least for this boat, um, that we needed to, to do that. We wouldn't actually find ourselves using that equipment. Um, so the NAVDIS, this is where all these lovely videos are made. Maki's, uh, Maki spends many, many hours putting together the fantastic videos that she does right here. Um, as a nav station, this does lift up. There's plenty of space underneath this for a large uh, desk area. There's more cabinet space down here. One of the things that we did opt to, uh, that we did after market, was that we had just catamarans add a power outlet here. Obviously you can see we have the, uh, the, the vacuum, the cordless vacuum uh, plugged in here. So we added an extra outlet here. Um, so that was really uh, one of the only things that we've added in this particular area, but there's plenty of space. There's even more space up here. There are these little USB outlets are all over the boat. Uh, these are double USB plugs. And they're, just in this salon here, there are three of them. So you could plug in directly into the boat USB jacks uh, six. Um, and then obviously we have different, you know, things like this unit here where you could plug in one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven USB plugged items too. So there's no shortage of all your, you know, when you, it's the one thing you don't think of when you live at home or realize 
or rather at least we didn't, was just how much electronic stuff, you know, between all our cell phones and our cameras and the lights and all of this stuff, iPads, and every, there's so many things that need to get plugged in. Um, so it's really great. Each uh, We'll go over this when we get to the cabins, but each cabin has its own source of, of USB plugins and stuff. So it's just, the boat's really, really well laid out. Um, there's the, the thought process that has gone into the day-to-day -day functional use of how would either a couple or a family use this boat? Again, we, we put a lot of thought into that of how we as a family of four would use this boat. Where would we need to plug things in? What are the options that we would want to have, again, done, done at the factory or done aftermarket? So we didn't do a lot of aftermarket um, stuff in here, but we did, um, we did opt for several things from the factory that we've gone over already. But Nav Station is a fantastic place to uh, the boys sometimes sit here and do some reading, but this is this is uh, video editing central for, for Maki. So this is our forward facing galley, which I love because when we're on the way, I can um, easily see what's going on. Um, but beyond that, look at all the counter space that we have, uh, which allows more than just one person working the galley. There's plenty of room for two people. I also love uh, that we have two large sinks. The main sink is a working sink, and um, the other sink we use as a drying rack, since it does have a drainage. And it also comes with this uh, countertop, which just adds uh, to the working space. I love this three burner stove. Uh, it's a perfect size for this size of the galley. And uh, the boat also comes with uh, the gas oven, which I don't uh, have tendency to, uh, to use. However, I do use my electric oven instead. We also have additional space that allows to store um, different kitchen appliances. It does come with three different outlets, which is great for me because I do often use machines such as bread machine or rice maker or pressure cooker. So that really helps. So let me just show you the amount of storage that is in this galley. Uh, this is my main pantry that I use on a, basically every day. So I just store all the food that I need pretty much on a daily basis. And it's look at the amount and look at the size. It's it's quite it's quite large. It's, it actually goes really deep, as well. And then these are all our um, drawers that we have. So this is where we uh, store our silverware and plates and different. And we have in here some of the other items, rags and towels. And this is my spice rack. Look how cool this is. Uh, and it also makes this whole um, space more organized. This is the back side of our galley, and this is where we keep some of our appliances, and there's more food storage as well. This is the huge drawer for the cookware, and this is where we have our trash bin. And then just around the corner is where we store all our cups. So the, the top one is the freezer, which is quite good size. And then we have the refrigerator, which it gives you additional shelf for just a better organization. Refrigeration is very important, so especially to keep all the fresh foods and vegetables. So besides these two, besides our freezer and refrigerator, we do have down in the main cabin, large domestic freezer. And then we have an aft cockpit uh, small refrigerator as well as the Yeti cooler. Our main. <laughs> Hurry up, brother! Our, run main, out of space our on main food storage is located in these three floor bins. I'm gonna show you real quick. So we like to separate them into four like items. So like right here, we have the condiments and canned goods and sauces. And this bin has pasta and grains and cereal. And then this last bin has um, mostly some beans and rice 
and some snacks and more pasta. So this just allows to be uh, more organized and I think it also holds food for a very, very long time. We can stock food probably for four, five, five months maybe, which is a good thing. It has plenty of storage. It's, it's all right here, which is great. panel this is pretty much the heartbeat of the entire boat this is where you're going to monitor everything um, that's going on so we'll do a different video um, specific to this but just a quick pass through uh, this is the main VHF uh, head uh, there is this uh, handheld that we have up at the helm so this is more of a remote that, that um, uh, rides on this main head unit then you have the controller here for the water maker um, these are all the breakers that are down here for, uh, so this is, this one on the top is uh, Victron. Um, it m monitors the, the uh, battery's operational levels. It also is a smart uh, controller, so it learns how we use the boat, what demands we put on the batteries. Um, and then everything down here, these are literally just breakers similar to what you have at home, whether it's for the VHF, autopilot, instruments, which includes everything that's up at the helm, including the fusion radio, uh, liquid propane gas controller, um, you know, the water pressure, everything else that's, that's listed here. Um, and then you have things like your exterior lights for your deck lights, your navigational lights, your uh, steaming lights when you're underway, anchor light when you're at anchor, uh, turning on the breakers so you can use all the lights, you know, lights in the cabins or in the salon. Here's the switch for all the fans. So you, you, know, you, you see that it's not on, you just break, push this over, now you're switched turns on and the fans are activated. Um, so everything, they, they're all just listed here. These are all the different, um, these are all the different um, switches for the individual bilges. The bilges cannot be turned off. So obviously you don't, you would never want to turn them off. Um, but these switches are so that you can actually manually activate them if you needed to. Um, and then up here you have all the different lights that are telling you what's going on whether you have low battery voltage or the water pressure pump is on. So if something's making noise, you would usually see a light come on here first. Uh, this controls uh, where the main source of power is coming in from. So right now, again, we're sitting in a marina. So this is shore power and it's broken into two because we have the port and starboard side. If we were on the generator, then you would see the generator. You slide these up. Right now I can't slide them up because shore power is on, but you would turn on your generator and uh, your transfer switch, and that would give you power on both uh, port and starboard. And then everything here is uh, all the options you wanna, you're want you gonna wanna turn on, whether it's the port or starboard water heaters, your air conditioning systems on either side, the washer, dryer, things of that nature. So that's a quick overview of the breakers. Above here on the top, these are the, uh, this is the controls for the generator, how you actually turn it on, and then monitor all the systems um, on the generator. Uh, and this is for the inverter, uh, so you'll see uh, inverting power and um, where your battery um, consumption levels are. You've got the controllers here at the bottom. Again, I know this is a very quick pass through, but these are the controllers for the uh, air conditioning systems, which is both for cooling and heating. So obviously there's uh, two, one for each side, and then the main uh, head for the fusion, uh, the fusion stereo system. So that's a quick pass through of the breaker panel. All right, so Maki just went over uh, all this, the, the galley and all the, the food storage that you saw in the floor, uh, floor bins. Um, you know, when we talk about the uh, way different boats are set up and why we say that this is a blue water cruiser, um, one of the really, really big ones is that there's just immense amounts of storage on here. So you're going to go on a three or four week Atlantic crossing or the Pacific Ocean where you're, you're obviously thousands of miles offshore. You need lots of, of uh, food items and beverage items um, on here. So. You saw what's in the floor. I showed you what this table can do, but that's not all. 
there's more to uh, to the space. So the really cool thing uh, that Leopard's designed here is that everything here has multifunction. So this lovely little stool, there are two of them that are on the boat. You'll see that these things come off and you can store all kinds of different items on the inside. That is also the same when we start talking about this entire sitting area. So let me just take these pillows off and I'll show you what's underneath here. So these all lift up. So this again, when we provision for long offshore passages, so you can see how much more food items get stored down here. Uh, this is just more rice and grains and uh, you Close. know things like yeah peanuts and snacks and because there's cookies or think not not we don't do a lot of that we tend to make our own cookies and muffins and things of that nature but again it's just an immense amount of, of storage space that we use uh, at least on our boat we use for food because we're we're doing longer periods of time you know during during this period when you saw us leave uh, Fort Lauderdale we had provisioned the boat. Uh, well, pretty much for an Atlantic crossing. The reason we had done that was uh, obviously we're living in this crazy uh, era of COVID-19 and we did not want to be going ashore and running to the grocery store or Costco or whatever every week or even every month. So we loaded this boat up uh, as if we were going on a long offshore uh, passage. So there's a lot of uh, food items on here. There's also uh, just like Maki separates items in the floor, so whether it's broken up by pastas and grains and, and condiments and things of that nature, we tried to follow a similar uh, pattern here. Um, well, here I'll take this out. Um, so we have additional um, dry items, whether they're plates or toilet papers or paper towels, some water. Again, there's lots of things uh, this needs a little organization, <laughs> but you can see that it holds, there's extra shampoos, there's paper towels, there's toilet paper, uh, all kinds of things that you can store down in this space as well. And this is still yet another one underneath here. Um, and so we try to uh, put items that we access regularly, whether it's a little broom or some paper towels, um, the pressure cooker, things of that nature. So um, again, it, you will obviously use the space how you see fit for your family. Um, and for your, your adventures, but uh, it's amazing, truly amazing how much, this is just here, we haven't even started to go through the rest of the storage that's down in each cabin. So um, when you look at and take into consideration everything that you can put on this boat when you talk about um, provisioning, uh, it's an absolute massive amount of food that you could put on here. It would be, it's no problem. And this is where, again, when you start to talk about a boat that is set up for blue water cruising, it's not just the hull designs and all that uh, from the, the physical ability of the boat to make the journey. But for you to be able to stay alive on board by having plenty of food and, and water uh, and uh, all, the, all the different provisioning items that you would need to make that kind of a uh, journey. factory options that we uh, selected were, uh, one is, is the uh, fans. So there are uh, two fans, when you opt for the fans, there are two that you get on, on either side of the salon, and then there's one in each cabin. So uh, we opted to get these fans, obviously it's fantastic just to have some air movement. These have three different settings um, for the fans that are from the factory. Um, they're good, you know, uh, we're gonna probably take a look at uh, changing these out for um, a different fan that's a, a little bit bigger and moves a little more air. Um, but these are, it's great to, the reason I would say to, to opt to have the factory um, install the fans is because of the wiring. All the electrical has been run to the panel, everything's already in. You know, the cost of these fans is not significant and um, Again, this just comes down to practicality. You know, it's so much harder, so much, there's so much more. Um, well, all right, let me just say it this way. One thing that we have uh, figured out is to be very careful of what you do not opt from the factory because, and you do want it. So let's just say the fans as an example. We say, let's not get it from the factory. We'll get it aftermarket, just catamarans will, will install it for us. The fans cost essentially nothing. They're very inexpensive. Even nicer ones are ones that move more air. 
it's always the labor that's going to cost. And I'm not saying that to say that, oh, uh, just catamarans or somebody else's labor costs are high. Um, it's just the amount of time that's going to go into opening panels up, taking, running, snaking things through walls and behind, figuring out how they're going to get the power to a back to the panel to the breaker. It's just headache free. Um, and there are options that you could say we could do aftermarket like we have done, whether it was the cushions or we opted. There is solar you can get from the factory. We opted to do it aftermarket. So, you know, in the videos that we've already done that we thought through those things and said, OK, this is. Uh, relatively easy install at uh, aftermarket and we can have actually have a cost savings and maybe even get a, a better unit um, or better product whatever it may be changing these out right here is very simple i'm not an electrician or an electrical engineer i can do this i think <laughs> so anyway the uh the fans were one of the options the other one that we opted for um, is, and it's not the TV, but it is the provisioning for the TV. And what that means is that you get this wall bracket. Now, I guess you could install one of these yourself. Uh, there are options, again, at the time that we ordered the factory from, uh, and we ordered our boat, that you could get the provisioning for the TV here in the salon and also in the master suite. Um, we did not get one in the master suite because we just, you could always stream on iPads if you want to watch a movie or something. But it's to get this. Now this thing's, you know, an articulating arm that has a good range that comes all the way here. So it gives you a good viewing. So as you know, um, we had mentioned to you that behind uh, in the salon here is the dining space. And that bed, that table uh, converts to a king size bed. So at times when it's cold, like now, when it's cold out or wet outside and we want to have movie night, um, we can convert this to the king size bed and all of us, actually more than a family of four, could fit on that bed. And then you have your TV here. So it's it's a really nice, uh, really nice setup. I would, I don't th I would, I think we would do it the same. Mm -hmm. We would opt yeah. to get this from the factory. I mean, getting a articulating, you know, arm from, for a TV is, I guess, mm -hmm. not that big a deal, but it was just one of the things that, you have to keep in mind that this... Um, what size of the TV? Yeah, the, the, the max, I believe this... Is, I think the max size you can get, at least again on a Leopard 45, is I believe this is a 32 inch. Uh, 32 inch, I believe, is the max size screen uh, because it'll bump up into that, that corner of the back actual win window area. So we do not really watch tv but we do like watching movies we do like watching um you know things that, whether they're on netflix or amazon prime or hulu or whatever service you use so this is actually more of a gaming monitor or you can get more of just a tv monitor instead of the actual full on television um and that's it we have our Apple which it doesn't come with the sound system so you have to buy a little speakers we learned but that it after depends. we bought it yeah yeah so right. we do have our own speaker for it uh we have the apple tv mounted here here's the, the controller for the apple tv <laughs> Welcome to the Starboard Owner's Hall. Please. <laughs> okay, so we are in the uh, Starboard uh, Hall. Again, this is an owner's version, which means that this hall, the Starboard Hall, the entire hall is for mocking me. <laughs> Port side, you have your two uh, onboard suite uh, cabins. Um, so we'll go through this here. Uh, obviously, this is the... Uh, very, very, very comfortable bed. Um, obviously, you can see that uh, the leopard layout here is very open and spacious. Um, thing that we really love about this, not only that it's modern and clean, but also bright. There's lots of, uh, you have a hatch, a large hatch right above the bed. We have three very large windows. Uh, one of them, the shades, uh, is down. And there are two porthole uh, windows that you can open. That uh, window behind the bed there is your facing aft on the starboard transom steps. Each cabin has its own uh, ventilation fan. And as we had mentioned, um, there's lots of storage. Uh, you have a large drawer directly underneath the bed. We have the floorboard storage as well. 
Apologize if this is a little full. Uh, this is products and stuff from Maki's uh, clients that order skincare, custom skincare products from around the world. So this is filled with that, but you can see how large the drawer is. Holds a lot of stuff here. The floorboard as well has a lot of storage here. Um, and then this is another uh, nice little desk sitting area. This actually looks up there. It's a, more of a vanity for ladies that might need to use the mirror here. Other than that, you could fill it and use it as a desk. Oliver and Lucas sometimes sit here and do their schoolwork. You can see these fantastic shelves that hold uh, lots of books. Um, like many of you, uh, homeschooling continues. So here is uh, some of the school, school books for, for the boys. And then continuing down the uh, hallway here, we have all the closets and drawers uh, that we have for for clothing um, again there's lots of hanging space so if we look in here you have lots of hanging space on this side this side is also hanging however maki had found these kind of shelving things that you can hang this up and then make use of it more like shelves and then we have the drawers here again there so you have three large drawers in this cabinet space so really nice, uh, spacious area. So we have a total of four drawers. You see there's a bank of, of three drawers here. There's a, another drawer underneath the closet here. Um, and then another uh, bookshelf. Or you can use this for obviously anything you want, whether it's books or some people put their iPads and electronics, store them in here. Um, I'll show this uh, in a little bit later, but these are some of the access panels that I've talked about. They're all along. There's some back here. There's one here for the air conditioner, another one here. Um, and then you've got your air conditioning vents. Again, uh, again as we had mentioned, we optioned the uh, AC system on board this boat. So there are two air conditioning systems, one for port and one for starboard. So there's light everywhere. We have these also these smaller um, smaller hatches all of them I, I do like that these things have this screening so you can open it and obviously keep most of the bugs out unless you're in florida and no cms can get through these things um and then at times when it's really hot and sunny you can close these off um it will of course be a little darker down here but it's really good at keeping the boat nice and cool so you have this you have the snaps up here you undo these again this is just accordions down they have these little um, kind of rubbery, stretchy little um, attachments that just go onto there and holds it nicely in place. And that's that. Pretty simple. So uh, a very large, spacious bathroom. I'm almost six feet tall, <laughs> not wide, <laughs> not yet. So uh, there's a good amount of, of headroom here. It's This is every bit as large as most uh, condo or apartment showers. Really nice that it has this nice plexi. Um, again, adjustable stainless uh, chrome shower heads. Obviously there's the actual head. You have storage down below here. There's a trash can, the toilet paper, you know, cleaning products, um, medicine cabinet uh, that holds a fair amount. And then uh, in this upper section is the uh, washer dryer. We'll point that out in a few minutes here. This lower section has a ton of storage space. So good deep shelves. You can maximize this with a variety of different, you know, containers, but again, it's, a lot of space to store uh, plenty of uh, personal care items. Uh, the one other thing that we did, um, so one thing that was, and this is true throughout the boat, that all the heads are electric. That was a factory option that we selected. Uh, and and uh, that would uh, have the toilets flushing only with salt water. So when the boat arrived, we had just catamarans add this. This is a toggled switch. 
that goes from fresh over to salt water. So if you're pushing the button and it's on salt, obviously it's it's pulling raw seawater in to flush the uh, the toilets. And if you f uh, flip over to fresh, it's now using water from our water tanks to um, to flush the head. The reason you would do something like this, and the reason why we did it, was that when you are in a marina as we are right now, there's a lot more stagnant, warm water, and the seawater has a very strong smell to it. Uh, not a pleasant one <laughs> that you necessarily want in inside the boat. So we'll anytime we're in, usually in an anchorage, definitely uh, in a marina, maybe on a mooring ball, uh, we'll switch over to fresh water, and uh, and that way it's just it's cleaner, it smells cleaner. When we're out at sea and underway, we'll fl uh, flip these over back to salt water because out at sea the the, the salt water is fresh um, and there is no smell actually at all. So. Um, that get, we thought that that was actually a, for us it was an important uh, feature to add.